Hey everybody, I'm Ken Brandt and I'm an artist. So the video you're going to see today is a time lapse of this epic still life that I did and unfortunately there was an area, uh, some video that uh, when I'm doing the underpainting uh, in the uh, background area, I'm just using burnt umber in that area and uh, that part is missing um, but it's not it's nothing that uh, is going to prevent you from understanding what I did um, you'll you'll be able to see it rather clearly that uh, it was just uh, putting in some of the uh, darker areas and some lighter areas using burnt umber and that's all that was so that parts uh, missing but the rest of the video is uh, all there and if you have any questions or comments about uh, this particular still life or um, any other painting, uh, please leave a, leave a comment uh, below and I will make sure that I uh, read that and get to it. In the future, I plan on doing some uh, paintings that aren't time lapse. Uh, they'll be shorter paintings, or not shorter, but smaller, and um, not quite as complicated and we can go through it uh, step by step exactly how how the colors are applied and what my particular technique is um, on when I'm when I'm doing an oil painting so uh, be looking forward to that and if you like this video make sure you hit the like button and subscribe so sit back and enjoy for the underpainting the colors that I used for this was raw umber burnt umber and I uh, used some Payne's Gray to mix in with the raw umber uh, to darken it up in some areas like for the area behind the bottle and the wine glass that's uh, raw umber and some Payne's Gray. Um, a lot of it is uh, just straight raw umber and the uh, other darker areas. Um, there was a section of video for whatever reason it didn't record where I was putting in the background, I was using the burnt umber, and you're going to see that coming up here where it just magically appears. Uh, but uh, all you really, all you really missed out of that was just um, uh, putting in some darker areas and some lighter areas using the burnt umber uh, for the background. And there it is, right there. So I continued using the burnt umber for the uh, fruit and the uh, bowl and the bread, as well as the knife handle that's sticking out. What I did with the, uh, for the lighter areas, on uh, like, like the green grapes there, I pretty much just dipped my brush in some uh, paint thinner and went back over it and actually removed uh, the paint that I put on there to lighten up those areas. When I was putting this picture together, or setting up the still life, um, everything looked pretty complete. Um, I drew it onto the canvas and I really didn't realize until I started painting that on the left hand side I, there's just like this empty space over there and you can see it right now it's just that emptiness I have the white uh, material on the right side I got all the fruit and everything in the middle uh, the peeled orange is my focal point which is directly in the middle but that didn't matter because when you have uh, all kinds of things like this uh, for a still life, something is going to be in the middle. And I really wanted that orange, that peeled orange, to be uh, my main interest uh, for this, to bring your eyes right into the center of that. But on the left, I have nothing. And this um, seems like a problem for me. So I tried a bunch of different things. I put, I took another orange and threw it back there on the right side of the setup, and that really didn't look very good. Uh, I grabbed a pearl necklace, uh, figured maybe that could you know drape that down and kind of 
swirl that around, kind of give it some interest, but that didn't work very good. What I ended up doing is I ended up taking some more white material and putting it behind the bowl there on the left hand side to fill in that area. And you'll see when I'm uh, painting in the uh, rest of the, uh, uh, when I'm putting in the colors, which I'm doing now, I'm putting in the basic colors, uh, you'll see that I, uh, I left it blank and I put the fabric in it later. For the oranges, it was just a mixture of cadmium yellow, um, deep, and regular cadmium yellow, and I mixed it with uh, some ultramarine violet um, that really made the uh, yellow, uh, gave me some really dark, darker greens that, and oranges um, that really worked out well for the shaded areas. For the grapes, it was um, the cad yellow and uh, again ultramarine uh, violet and then dulled it down but it, it makes this really nice green which almost matched the green grapes perfectly. For the purple grapes I used a combination of the ultramarine violet and some Haynes gray to uh, make those dark grapes. In some of the grapes I use uh, some linser and crimson uh, to kind of put some uh, red highlights into the purple grapes. I did see some of that in my setup, so I wanted to incorporate that. For the apples and the pear, the green areas, I used some yellow yellow green and some sap green and I um, mixed it with the ultra marine violet um, and some uh, um, cadmium yellow just to kind of lighten it and darken it in areas and then that worked out really well for those colors. The wine bottle is just pretty much a mixture of the ultramarine violet and some lizard and crimson. And that, uh, I thought that matched the, um, the actual bottle, the colors that I was seeing in my setup. And it worked out really nice. And the bottle looks great now, but when you start putting in the colors for the background in that, that bottle, that wine bottle really pops. For the white, for the base, I did a mixture of cerulean blue and titanium white. Uh, and so that's not pure titanium white. Although, uh, looking at it, you, you would think that it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like bright white, but it's really not. And then for the uh, um, shaded areas on the vase, I mixed in some ultramarine blue uh, to darken that up.
when I set up my sill I, I uh, used a knife to cut that peel on the orange so you can kind of see that straight edge there. That started to bother me as I was kept staring at the painting over time and I realized that maybe it just needed to be a little bit more rough looking like you actually peeled it with your fingers. I tried peeling it with my fingers originally and uh, it just wasn't it just wasn't working very well so I ended up using a knife but uh, you know the effect of the peel hanging down was really what I was going for. For this drapery on the right hand side, uh, it's it's a white uh, drape, but uh, for the shadow areas I just used um, a mixture of uh, Payne's Gray and Titanium White. Uh, obviously uh, for the darkest areas it's almost straight Payne's Gray, but not quite. And if you can tell it, it matches my sweatshirt almost perfectly. Uh, but that'll actually once you start putting the lighter colors into the uh, drapery uh, It changes the whole effect of the, the way it looks right now In this area here I was using some dry brush techniques. I actually have some of the underpainting showing through on this fabric that I painted and uh, I left it that way and it really looks nice. For the background, the as you can see in the picture, it's a dark, it's kind of like a dark maroon. Um, I was using a mixture of alizarin crimson and um, some quinacridone uh, magenta, and I thought that was kind of a close match to what I was seeing, but I really didn't like the effect that I was getting. It just seemed too bright. so. I actually end up going back over that and darkening that whole area up. It just, I just really was, wasn't happy with the color. And here you can see I'm leaving that area to the left open because I know I'm going to put some fabric in there. And I, here I am painting the fabric in. And I'm, I'm just, I don't have any drawing or anything. I'm just going by what I'm seeing. I'm just putting in the lines. And that's the thing about fabric. As long as you. Uh, put in the lines for your darks and your lights and then go over that with a you know blend those in because you're gonna have some sharp edges and some soft edges so you need to just determine where your soft and sharp edges are going to be and go in there with a brush and blend those in and your fabric will always look good So here's where I started going back over that brighter color and I, I really darkened that up and I was much happier with it after I done, uh, did that because it just gave the, the painting a, a more natural uh, look to it. With the color, the brighter color, it didn't, just didn't look right. Uh, it, just, it didn't give it that realistic look and I, I was really I was kind of going for a, a, a more of a classical look on this painting. So I wanted to darken that up.
You can see how once you add those shaded areas in underneath the fabric on the left, it really makes that uh, fabric, uh, it grounds it to the table that it's sitting on and it looks a, a lot more realistic. At this point I was quite happy with how the painting was coming out and now I, uh, when I took a closer look at the canvas I had a lot of little areas where um, there wasn't any paint, it was a lot of underpainting showing through, like in between the grapes and just in the smaller areas where I just didn't hit it with, uh, with the larger brush. So that's what I'm doing now and just going over those areas and filling those in, uh, putting some uh, necessary shadows on the grapes, uh, ma making the uh, grapes uh, darker where they need to be uh, like underneath the lemon there that lemon is still popping out on the bowl and in reality it should be kind of sitting back a little bit a little bit more shadow area so I, I take care of that and uh, but you know I go through and I just touch up all these little little areas here and fill them in and it really uh, makes a huge difference in the painting I added some more uh, shaded areas to the uh, base and the uh, behind the bread, and that uh, that helped it sit back there in, in, in the in the painting a little bit better. Here I am putting in some of the highlighted areas on the fruit, like this particular apple, and then the pear behind it. There's you know a couple spots where you got some light peeking in around that bowl, and I wanted to make sure that that showed up on the, on the, the painting. Here I am darkening up that that lemon so it sits a little bit or it appears to be sitting back a little bit farther in that bowl so it doesn't look like it's just sitting on the top of everything. Now here's where I decided to fix that orange, kind of make it look a little bit rougher on the peel, so it looks like you peeled it by hand, um, and it must it made it look a lot better. So this is pretty much coming to the end of, of the painting here, where I was quite happy with it. If you have any questions or comments on what I was doing here, or if there's anything that you would like to know more about, uh, be sure to uh, leave a comment. Uh, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. I'm going to have a lot more videos coming up of uh, different things that I like to paint. And uh, um, hopefully you'll be here to uh, uh, join me in, in watching these.